address it. Hey everybody, Dr. O again. Uh, here we're going to cover just real quickly a couple things about the appendicular skeleton. So your appendicular skeleton would be your appendages. So what parts of the skeleton comprise the appendicular skeleton? So we have your arms and legs. So you've got the humerus, radius, ulna, your carpal bones, your, your metacarpal bones, and your phalanges. And then your lower extremity, you have the femur, tibia, fibula, patella, your kneecap, your tarsal bones, metatarsals, and phalanges. But uh, you also have the pelvic and pectoral girdle. So how I like to say this is your appendicular skeleton is your appendages, your limbs, and the bones that attach them to your axial skeleton. So uh, I'll answer the, what, what makes up the pectoral and pelvic girdle in a moment. What are some of the functions of the appendicular skeleton? It's primarily its movement. So when your muscles contract, they pull on these bones and that's where you move. But uh, of course, manual dexterity, using our arms, et cetera. So primarily movement, where I look at the axial skeleton primarily as a protective role. Of course, it's a base for all our muscles as well, but uh, appendicular skeleton, I primarily think movement. Um, what bones make up the pectoral and pelvic girdle? So the pectoral girdle is going to be the clavicle and the scapula. What's, the, what's crazy about that is imagine you're a pitcher throwing a 95 or 100 mile an hour fastball. The only bony attachment, the only thing that's holding your arm on is the sternoclavicular joint. The only true joint is where the sternum is attached to um, your clavicle. There's, you know, we, we call it like a pseudo joint, how your, your, your scapula sits on your thoracic spine, but that's a completely muscular joint. All, so all the force going through your arm when you throw something, it, that's the only joint holding it on is where, the, is where that clavicle is attached to the sternum. I just think that's kind of interesting. Then the pelvic girdle would be your coxal bones or your os coxa bones. I, I don't use that term very often. I like to talk about them separately. The ilium on the top, the ischium on the back, your butt bone is your ischium and the pubis in your pubic region in the front. So, um, and lastly, what are some of the key differences between the male and female pelvis? So the female pel or male pelvis is going to be like overall, you know, you'd say larger, thicker bones. It's going to have larger attachment points for muscles because the man is, is heavier and stronger, but uh, mo usually again, uh, you know, uh, the average man. But when you, when you think about the male and female pelvis, the, the glaring difference is um, one has a birth canal. So whenever you see a term like wider or more wide open or like an increased angle, that's going to be the female pelvis. So just kind of just remember that pelvic inlet, the inside of the pelvis where that baby would be sitting and then leaving the birth canal has to be a lot more wide open, even though, so even though the, you know, the male pelvis might be larger because of just carrying more weight around and larger muscle attachment points. When you hear words like, like wider, um, that, you know, that's when you're thinking there's room for a baby. So that, that to me, those are the key differences when you look at, um, oh, like the ilium is going to be flared out more in the female, but then that pelvic inlet and that birth canal is going to be the main thing there. So, so not a lot to say here. Uh, you know, the, the bones and what I want you to know about them is covered in other places. But I did want to highlight this real quickly just because there are a few things like this that might show up more on a unit or lecture exam than they would on a lab exam or a lab quiz. Okay. Have a great day.